Welcome to another accounting video and today I got an email about a ACOM 1 question uh, June 2012 and it's about a sales ledger control account and I've already done a video um, specifically around the idea of a control account whether it's people you owe money to or people who owe you money and <clears throat> I think the issue that was being highlighted in the email was sort of the principle what what is um, this what, what what does it stand for? Well, a sales ledger control account essentially stands for uh, it's a measure of what we are owed. So I'll start writing down here. So it's what we are owed. So this is, this is in terms of cash. We've sold goods to someone; they owe us money. Quite simple. We all know that. So it's a measure of how much we're owed. So what is that? Well, we know straight away that's an asset, don't we? Trade receivables are an asset, and what what what's the distinctive characteristic of an asset T account? It goes up on the debit. As simple as that. So essentially, anyone anything that increases the amount we are owed will go here, going upwards, and anything which causes the amount we're owed to go down. So say if someone pays us, this will come down, won't it? So, straight, let's go straight into it anyway, and you'll probably notice from the information if you've read it yourself, or you're reading it now, there's information here that's just not relevant to sales ledger control accounts, so stuff like trade payables, it's not relevant whatsoever, so make sure you always ignore it. So what do we always start with in a T account? It's always the broad down. So how do I know it goes up on the debit? Well, it always goes on the debit. Uh, of, a tr of a sales ledger control account, and it always goes in the debit of an asset account. You can't have negative assets, can you? That's just liabilities. So the brought down is simply 86212. I've extracted that from here. So at the start of this period, we are owed that much money, and then through this period now, we're just going to work out who's paid us, what's increased that amount, etc., etc., then we'll get a brought down at the end of it. <coughs> So, what can I take out of the cash book? Well, we're dealing with sales, pay to supply, so that's to do with purchases, so we don't need that. We didn't need that earlier either. We see from customers, well, we certainly need that, don't we? So, what I'll put is bank. But you could put, you could easily put uh, receive from customers, customers payments, cash received, you could put anything like that. So, bank. 32194. So you'll notice I've put it on the credit because received from customers, that's people have paid us. Therefore, they've bought the goods from us. We say they owe us money because they've bought goods and then they've paid that amount. They no longer owe us that money, do we? So we need to get rid of that, don't we? And we can't ignore the discount, can we? And we've sold goods and given a discount. So that's discount allowed 519. Because we need to take that away as well, don't we? We don't just ignore that. So, purchases day book, once again, we don't need it. It's got no relevance to what we're doing. We're doing sales, trade receivables. Sales day book, okay, so we've made sales. Does that increase the amount people owe us or decrease? It's going to increase, isn't it? So, I'll just put sales day book. So we've sold goods to people and they're uh, yet to pay us. So they owe us money, we're going to put it on, put it up on the debit, aren't we? Because it increases it, doesn't it? Assets go up on the debit. Okay, so we've dealt with that. Returns inwards. So is that, with, is, is that to do with sales? Well, yes it is. We've sold goods and then they've returned it in to us, they've returned it back to us. So we've sold goods to someone, we say they owe us money because we've sold them the goods, then they've returned the goods. Therefore they don't owe us any money, they haven't got the goods anymore, have they? So returns in two four ninety. So that's that dealt with. Uh, returns outwards, so that's to do with purchases, isn't it? We've brought in goods and we've returned them back out to the suppliers. So we don't need that. <coughs> so you notice four things that I've had to cross out. So 
they are they will actually do this. It's just knowing what goes into each type of account and then just ignoring things that you don't need. Um, so this additional information, this journal entry here, bad debts written off on the debit. So on the debit it's an expense isn't it? Expenses go up on the debit. So we've got a bad debt written off. So we've sold, but what's the story behind this? It's always good to just envisage it in a context in a sense. Don't just look at the numbers and try and sort of guess or learn the order. So what's happened there is we've sold goods to uh, J Prout Limited and we've said you owe us £204 and then J Prout is obviously gone insolvent and they can't owe us the money anymore can they? Because there's a bad debt written off. We're saying they're not going to be able to pay, it, pay, us, pay us it anymore. So we might as well just take it out of our control account as well, mustn't we? So, bad debts. That's appalling handwriting, sorry. 204. So, decreasing the amount we are owed. Okay, so we're going to the additional information now. Coaching Limited is both a customer and a supplier. The contra entry should be made clear to the balance owing to Kirkson Limited of 681. So in the uh, control account video I did um, probably last year now, um, I highlighted that in a in a control account for sales, contra is always gone on the credit. Then if it was a purchase control account, it would just go on the debit. So I'm just going to put contra. You can put the name, but I'm not going to waste your time. You can put contra and Kirks Limited, but you don't need to. Um, so that's that. Part two: A check for one two four four received from Lovian Limited, a credit customer. Yep. So they're buying goods from us. They're a customer. Was returned unpaid by Lovian's uh, Lovian Limited's bank. The check was in full settlement of an invoice of one two seven six. So you'll instantly notice that the settlement, well, the actual, the cost of the invoice was one two seven six, and the check was one two four four. So we've obviously allowed some discount there. So what's the story behind this? We've made the sales, uh, they said they owe us 1244, they've gone to pay us it, and then they've it's obviously been returned by the bank, obviously they don't have the funds in their bank account to pay us. So what we did previously is we would have said, we would have put that bank entry here and said we received it, therefore de uh, reducing the amount owed. But they now owe us the money again, don't they, because they actually haven't paid us, because they've returned it. The, the check's been returned by the bank. So I can put returns check. So the amount owed to us has increased again because of this check being returned. 1244, and we're going to also add on that discount we allowed again. So the difference between 1276 and 1244 is 32. You used to do the biggest minus the smallest, easy as that. And the final bit of information, discount allowed of £56 was not entered into the cash book. Okay, so let's pretend that we sold goods for £100. Now, they had a selling price of £100 and we gave them £56 of discount allowed. So what, we f so what our accounts will say is, our cash book will just say, um, they owe us a hundred pound, but it actually doesn't do that. They only owe us forty-four pound because we've allowed fifty-six pound. So we need to take into account that discount allowed, don't we? So basically, what's happened is we've forgot to put discount allowed in, haven't we? And discount allowed is obviously going to decrease the amount we are owed. So we just need to put it on the credit. It's as simple as that. So you're going to add these two columns up now. I've gone through everything, haven't I? I've been through the information they've given us and then the additional information. Both sides come to 125701 with the brought down again on this side. 89557. Obviously the carried down will be here uh, just after discount allowed in the total between them two, but I just couldn't be um, Sort of wasting your time doing that. So the brought down is eight nine five five seven. That's the answer to that. So um, the email I think only um, was only centered around part two a in terms of the just in terms of this eleven mark question. But I'm still going to do B and C just to make sure everything's clear. 
So explain how this sales ledger control counts. So what we've just calculated should be used by Depeche. He is the man we are dealing with uh, to verify the balances in the sales ledger. <coughs> well, I'm sure you've all dealt with um, individual trade receivables counts. So you'll have Robinson, Jones, uh, Martins, stuff like that. And if you add up all the brought downs of all them separate little individual customer accounts, they should add up to this. And if they don't add up to that, there's obviously been an error either in the individual accounts, this account, or even worse, both. And you're going to have to correct that because they should equal each other. Because this is just the total of what we're owed. So all them individual accounts that owe us money should add up and equal that. It's as simple as that, really. I won't write it, it's only two marks, I think I've explained that okay. And part C, I completely forgot to print off, sorry, but it's two ways that the sales ledger control account can act as an aid to managing the business. So how can this sort of, this T account, how can it help us in managing a business? How can it help us make decisions in a sense? So I think one thing that's uh, straightforward and noticeable is it can assist in the preparation of statements, can't it? It saves time. Instead of having to add up all the values, the little values I said earlier about the individual customers, to get your trade receivables total, you can just take this, can't you? And just put it straight in to your balance sheet, can't you? So that saves a lot of time. Of course it does. I think also it provides data and it provides information and it provides um, a set of figures that management can make decisions upon and they can monitor and see is it is the uh, is the amount we're owed too high do we need to get them funds into the company so we can spend it elsewhere because you want to get them funds in as quickly as possible you want your receivables to pay you as quickly as possible so you have the money in your bank and then you can do what you want with it you can't do anything with this money until they've paid it you so i think it's very important to um make a point about how it's useful data and uh how managers uh, make decisions upon that data and um, I think that's it really. So I think the key thing to know about this question is when it comes to a sales ledger control account, it's just a measure, in my opinion, of what we are owed. I believe if you stick to that principle, it goes up on the debit, down the credit. I think it's quite easy. You don't really need to learn every single transaction and how it applies. I feel like if you stick to the what we are owed, concept I think you're okay and if it was a purchase ledger control account it would just go it would go up on the opposite side credit down the debit because it would be like trade payables wouldn't it they're a liability they go up on the creditors and it's a measure of how much we owe to other people so it's just the reverse it goes up on the credit it's what we owe to other people it's trade payables and it's purchases not sales in a sense so it's just uh, the complete opposite and I think that's quite simple when you put it that way and I, uh, I hope you've taken something from this video. I hope I've helped the person who emailed me about it. And uh, if you've got any issues still, email me and I'll uh, see you all in the next video.